Hi folks, my name's Rusty Lumpkin. I am the designer of Sea of Plunder and president of Three Nail Games. And today I am going to teach you how to play and set up Sea of Plunder. So first off, what you're going to do is you're going to take all your goods cards, which you are going to uh, make four stacks, and there should be four cards of each good in the game. So you're going to make four stacks, um, one stack of each good up above the uh, board. And one thing to note is that this is a finite amount of goods. There is not going to be any other um, purple goods in the game other than these four. So when they run out, they are going to run out. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to hand each player a player aid of their chosen color. And then you're going to take the cards and you're going to shuffle them. All right, after you shuffle them, you're going to go through and you're going to deal out five cards to each player. And then each player is going to take a look at their hand. And so they're going to look through their hand and this hand is totally fine for them to start the game with. All right, there's a couple things that you're watching out for that they are not allowed to have in their hands. And that's going to be any of the port island cards. All right, it's going to be an uh, island card with just the name of the island that you see on the board or a red bordered event card. All right, so any of these red border event cards, you'll notice there's a difference here. Um, and in the final version of the game, we are going to make a greater difference between the two event cards and the action cards. So the blues, the action cards, event cards are going to be in red. So you won't have uh, your red cards in your hand. So just to show you an example of how that might work, um, if a player looks at their hand and sees that they have one of those two things in it, such as this one here has two island cards, they're simply going to give those two back to the dealer and the dealer is going to hand them two new cards. All right, And at that point, their hand is good to play as well. So their hand stays hidden with that information. All right, just to show you how those play out. So if I flip over this hand here, it's got two island cards as well. We deal two new cards for it. That hand's now good to go. This one here has a couple event cards and an island card. We're going to deal three cards to them and now their hand is good to go as well. A couple things that you guys will, something else that everybody is going to start the game with is every player starts the game with a magical compass. So make certain to hand those to each of the players and I'll tell you what those are used for here in just a second. And then also each player is going to have a good of that port city that they are from. For example, the purple player is from Gracio, so they will start their hand with a good from Gracio as well. Same goes for green is going to get a green good, orange is going to get an orange good, and blue will get a blue good. So these are going to be the starting hands that will now go into the player's hands. So I'll go ahead and move these off the screen for a second. So the point of the game, or sorry, I, I guess I should show you the rest of the setup. So the leftover cards, what are you going to do with the leftover cards? You're now going to take those leftover cards, the, all the cards that got handed back to the dealer, you're going to mix those in with the rest of the deck. You're going to mix that in with the rest of the deck. You're going to shuffle those up real nice and good. And in the same fashion, you're going to lay one card down here in the um, play and discard area, and you're going to place the deck up here on the top. To set up the rest of the board, you are now going to take each of the pirate meeples and they will go in the squares located here at the um, a little darker square out here in the middle of the oceans. And then each player is going to have their boat starting on their home islands. So each collar goes matching and the 
treasure island is going to start right smack dab in the center of the board on the grid. Um, here you'll notice is 7-7. Seven, seven. In the final edition of the game, all right, you'll see that one, the top is going to be in alpha, A through M, and the up and down is going to be numbers 1 through 13. Okay, so that's going to help with uh, color blindness in the final copy of the game. We'll be able to say um, uh, A7, all right, or A7 to locate there. So now you have the official game of Sea of Plunder. It is all set up and ready to go. So I should tell you what the goal of the game is. The goal of the game is if you are this blue player or any of the players out here, your goal is trying to chase down these mysterious treasure islands. So like I said, the first one is going to start in the center of the map, but it can move uh, all over the place. Uh, so watch out for that. So you're going to be chasing after the mysterious treasure island while at the same time gathering goods as noted up here at the top, all right, you're going to gather goods um, along the way. So anytime you run into one of these colored islands out here, you'll be able to pick up a good of that matching color. If I cross Rabican or touch it in any way, all right, I will gain a good from Rabican. A couple other things to scoring you'll see up here on the board. So you get three points for every treasure island that you make it to, and you will gain... Um, points due to your goods based on set collection at the end of the game. So if you have two different types of goods, you will gain um, three points at the end of the game. If you have three different types of goods, you will have five points, and four different types of goods is going to be eight points. If you only have one type of good in your hand at the end of the game, so you may have two purple cards, that is going to be worth zero points at the end of the game. Um, so make certain to be searching for multiple different types of goods. Um, something else to note is that you can choose at the end of the game if you have multiple sets of goods. For example, if we have a blue, a blue and purple, and a blue, or sorry, a blue and a purple, and also a purple and a green, you can have multiple sets. So this set here would be worth three points at the end of the game. This here is going to be worth three points at the end of the game as well. So, um, a couple other things. Point-wise, each magical compass that you have is worth one point at the end of the game. And also, there is going to be debt that can be collected, and that is going to be worth points at the end of the game. What you're going to do is, on your turn, you are going to draw two cards from the top of the deck, or you can choose to draw one from the discard pile and one from the top of the deck. That's up to you. So you're going to draw two cards, you're going to add them to your hand, and you're now going to look at your hand and you're going to choose a card from your hand to play. So most of the cards in your hand are probably going to be these map cards. So if you choose to play this, so on your turn you're going to draw two cards, then you're going to play one, and then you're going to discard one. So draw two, play one, discard one. Um, what's really special about this game is whatever you play is commonly going to affect you. Whatever you discard is not just taking a card and chucking it to the wind. Your discard is going to have a major impact and it's going to move a pirate out here of your choosing. Okay, so if I were to play this map card here, all right, it has the L shape to it, it has to be played matching the compass down here in the bottom of this map. So we have a, a compass here on the bottom of this, you have a compass down here in the bottom right hand corner of the board as well. So that means that if I were the green player and I played this card, I am going to be the boat moving to the X. All right, so you have a boat down here in this corner, it moves over and north, and it's going to move up to that X. So it's over one and up two. Okay, so that's going to be the movement that I make. So I would play that card, and then whatever I choose to discard, such as this one right here, I can discard this, and it's going to move a pirate ship of my choosing, all right, over and diagonal down, diagonal down, which would then smash a player. And I can explain how that works and what that happens uh, to that here in a second. So any map cards, whatever you play moves you, whatever you discard moves a pirate of your choosing. 
So there are going to be also action cards that you will see in your hand. These are going to be the ones with the blue borders. These action cards, you can play them. If you choose to play them, all right, it is going to have the special effect mentioned right down here in the text of the card. So it says, move up to two treasure islands according to your discard. So that is going to be your play. All right, but if you choose to, uh, you're going to run into blue cards in your hand that for some reason, they just don't work well for your hand, or you just don't feel like playing that blue card, at any point in time, you can choose to not play these, and you can choose to discard them instead. And if you discard them, all these action cards have a special down here that if you discard it, it will allow you to move a pirate one spot north, south, east, or west. Okay, so it will not have the special effect. It only occur the special effect only occurs if you play it on your turn. But if you choose to discard it, you can move one pirate north, south, east, or west. Okay, so anytime you have these blue cards in your hands and you feel like they're taking up room or you want to change them out for maps, you can discard them to allow you to move a pirate as well. So on your turn, those are going to be the steps. Again, that's draw two. You're going to play one, play a card, whether it be a map card or an action card. That's commonly going to affect you. Uh, I'm just going to explain um, how this So Close Yet So Far works. Let's say I were to play this as my action. So my action is now that special, which says move up to two treasure islands according to my discard. So you'll notice that there is currently only one treasure island out there, so that's the only one I can move. Um, but when I discard a card, so let's say I discard this map card, it is now going to move that uh, treasure island down in diagonal, diagonal, just as if it were the boat. Okay, so the boat on this card, it's going to move from the ship to that X. So down, diagonal, diagonal. That was my play. So my play is the special effect. And this card is also my discard. So this card, the action card, gave my discard now a double meaning. So it moved the treasure island, but then I will always get my discard bonus, which is pick a pirate of my choosing anywhere out here on the map and move it accordingly as well. There's a couple things that you guys need to know about movement. Um, movement is pretty special in the fact that if you, um, the world being round, if you go off the map on one side, it pops you up on the other side Pac-Man style. Um, another thing to note is that everybody starts the game with one magical compass. These magical compasses you may discard um, or you may get rid of, toss it back into the pile, um, and it allows you to take your um, played card or your discarded map and it allows you to rotate it in any 90 degree orientation that you would like. So that makes it really handy if you've got something that just seems to continue to send it in the send you in the wrong direction. You can always rotate it in the opposite direction or whatever direction you would like as long as it's a 90 degree orientation uh, by using your magical compass. So as you're drawing through these cards you're going to notice um, that there are going to be some event cards that pop up. These event cards, if you draw one of these, you're instantly going to lay it down on the play slash discard area, all right, and you're going to draw a card to replace it. Then you're going to resolve the effect of the event card. This event card here says add another treasure island to the board. So at that point, you are then going to roll our custom 14-sided dice, and those 14-sided dice are going to tell us where that new treasure island is going to pop out. So that new treasure island is going to be on 1012. So blue 10, purple 12, that's going to be where our new treasure island is going to pop out. The game plays in, it can max out at um, three treasure islands. So a couple things to, um, that are important to know. Anytime somebody, all right, including the pirates, lands on or uh, discovers a treasure island, then you are going to give that person a coin. All right, so if it's a player, they get a coin, which is worth three points at the end of the game. Or if it's the pirates, they are going to get a treasure that goes up here in their treasure dish. So you are then going to remove that treasure island from the map. You're going to roll the 14-sided dice, and now you're going to place out a new treasure island. So now we're on uh, 11, and, well, that ended up really close. Uh, so that 11, purple, 12. 
Okay, so um, now those two treasure islands are there next to each other. All right, so anytime a treasure gets discovered, it gets replaced with a new treasure island by rolling the 14-sided dice. So what ends the game? The game ends when a player has collected three or more treasures or if the pirates end up collecting six or more treasures. So the 14-sided dice uh, is, your, you might notice that this is a 13 by 13 grid. So what happens if we end up rolling 14? On our 14-sided dice, the 14s are going to be skull and crossbones. Anytime you roll a 14-sided dice, that means instantly the pirates get a new treasure and you're going to then take and roll the 14 side dice both again. All right, so that is going to be a built-in mechanism. So again, the game ends when a player ends up with three or more treasures. You will then finish that round and tally up your scores, or when the pirates end up with six or more treasures. So pirates get treasures by the 14 side dice anytime they roll 14s, or if, let's say, the treasure is right here, Bob's really close to it. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it to that treasure. I can always use my discard to run the pirates in here and grab up that treasure before Bob gets a chance to. So that's, again, another way that pirates can get treasures. So event cards in here, there's a couple different ones. Um, some of them are going to be able to place out new treasure islands. Um, other ones are going to give everybody in the group new magical compasses. So those, that's another way of getting magical compasses. Uh, there are going to be many player interactions, possible interactions that can occur throughout the game. All right, so uh, you can run across the treasure. All right, that is totally fine. As long as you come into contact with that treasure in some way, shape, or form, you will still gain the coin from that um, encounter. All right, but if you ever land directly on that treasure, you will then be able to gain the coin and you'll also be able to gain a card off the top of the deck as a bonus for landing directly on top of the treasure. It can be quite difficult. So another thing is if you ever are playing the game and you run across another player, come into contact with another player, you get a draw card off the top of the deck and add it to your hand. If you ever land directly on another player, then you can steal a card directly from their hand, which means that you could also steal the good that they have in their hand. Again, if you run across the treasure or the uh, colored islands out here, these port cities, you'll be able to gain goods or gain a good of that color from the supply. And if you ever come into contact with the pirates in any way, shape, or form on anybody's turn, all right, if you come into contact with the pirates, whether you bump into them, run through them, or land directly on them, or they land on you, all right, you must bribe the pirates. They're attacking your ship. You must bribe the pirates with a good from your hand. All right, you have to give up one of these goods that you've worked hard to get a hold of. All right, you must bribe the pirates. If you don't have any goods to bribe them with, then you are going to take on debt. They're going to attack your ship, and you have to pay for the repairs of your ship, so you will receive a debt token, which is negative points at the end of the game. Um, one last thing that I want to note is going to be that in a two-player game, um, so we set this up as a four-player game, and it's totally fine to set it up as a three-player game, too. If you do, just remove one of these ships off the board um, and set it up just as I mentioned earlier. However, if you are playing a two-player game, uh, you're going to give one person two of these uh, player aid cards, and you're going to give the other person two of these player aid cards, and you are now going to be playing as both of those ships. So you're still going to have an opening hand of five cards, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so you're going to have an opening hand of five cards, but now your starting hand is going to be two goods because you are from both of those islands. So you're going to end up, this player would end up with a purple good and also a green good in their hand in their starting hand. A uh, nice little twist to the two player variant is going to be that you control both of these boats and on your turn you may choose either one of those as your play action. So as I play a card, I can choose to move the purple card or the purple boat or the green boat. That is up to me, whichever benefits me better. All right, or um, and you can use the green boat the entire game. As a matter of fact, you never even have to use the purple if you don't want to. Uh, but just note that they are both out there. 
you got to watch out for them, make certain that they don't get smashed by the pirates either, or make it easy for someone else to run into them. Okay, and that is the game of Sea of Plunder. Um, I hope you guys absolutely love it. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are, uh, and I'll see you guys later on the high seas.